All right, switched over. So here I am now. Um, Oh my goodness. All right, there we go, folks. All right, so, how's it light? That's not good. Let's change it this way. All right, there we go. Okay, so can folks see me there? How's it going? Three people. Wow. There's only three people in the other channel. Well, I can't hear a word I'm saying, so I assume you guys can hear me. Can you hear me? Please say you can hear me. Okay, Eric is saying yes, but I don't like yes means. I mean, you can hear me or you can see me. <laughs> yes doesn't help. Three people. Wow. This is the day my channel died. Okay, thank you, Boss Zebra, for telling me the sound is on. All right, I hope you guys can't hear that freaking uh, aircraft engine of an air conditioner in the background, which I can't seem to shut off. It's very annoying. Anyway, folks, thanks for listening to the stream. I don't know what happened to my guest. Uh, he's, he said he'd be here, and then he's not, so I don't know what to say, and I don't understand why my laptop's not working. Um, anyway, very annoying, very annoying. So there we have it. Well, welcome, folks. I've driven all the way to Ohio, 300-plus uh, miles over 500 kilometers, um, and uh, I um, didn't go to the hospital yet so I could do this stream, and, and it's not working. It's not working, so that really sucks. Anyway, well, let me look and see what we've missed here. I'll look on my... Uh, on my uh, a second here look on my channel very quickly at something okay anyway so hey, it's ron from the netherlands how are you ron okay let's see what it says here uh it's not showing up on my channel why is it not showing up on my channel interesting huh oh there it is it says i'm live okay okay there we go um Dirk Duprier says, how are you, Chris? Well, I'm a little frustrated. Wow, that's a terrible picture of me. <laughs> I'm a little bit frustrated. Um, yeah, I've just put the uh, laptop on so I can watch the chat. Anyway, thanks, guys. I appreciate it. I appreciate your patience. Um, yeah, sorry about the nonsense. Um, really don't know what the spiel is here, why he didn't show up. Very disappointed. I was excited about that. Uh, I was looking forward to it. And um, the Bermuda Tens is quite interesting. So... What I want to do is get Bram von Schrotten on here to talk about it because he was with the team. And uh, the team included Cecil Africa and some other players from Africa, including one of the top Kenya Sevens players was on the team and scored a try, which proved to be pivotal at the end of the first half there when they um, can, can hear five, five. Okay. And the AC is, as you mentioned, not too bad. Okay. Yeah, I can't shut it off. Um, I set the temperature for one and I turned it off. <laughs> it still runs. It's very annoying. It's almost like it's central controlled. So very irritating. But uh, that's, that's going to be kind of annoying because that means I'll have to sleep with that for the next couple nights. Anyway, folks, yeah, thanks for sharing the links. Uh, we did gain a few people here. And thanks for tuning in on Saturday, folks, which is normally supposed to be my Zoom session. But um, anyway, um, I don't know what happened to Brom. But back to the Bermuda 10s, folks. So here's the deal. Um, the, uh, the, it's 10, obviously. So, you know, you've got 50, rugby union. That's 15. We all know that. My eyes are kind of tired because I got up at 5 o'clock this morning so I could drive here. But uh, anyway, so... You know, you've got Rugby 15s, Rugby Union, then you've got 7s. We all know the 7s. HSBC 7s is a famous tournament. And, uh, and then on top of that, you've got now the 10s. Uh, it's another version of rugby. It's uh, kind of cool. Oh, Anne-Marie Nell found us. Well, thank you, Anne-Marie. Um, yeah, it was uh, crazy. Um, yeah, sorry. Um, I don't know why my laptop is useless. It wouldn't work. Uh, couldn't get the sound working. Uh, couldn't get the video working initially, but then eventually I got the sound working, so that didn't really help. I tried to test this, but uh, all the people who I can rely on in South Africa to test it were all screwing off at a bry. Uh, <laughs> so I couldn't, I, could, I couldn't count on them. Um, <coughs> Yanni, <coughs> Joe, <coughs> Roman, Jeremy. Anyway, they're all at a bry there in Pretoria, so um, they weren't available to um, help me out on this. So we can hardly hear it. Oh, you mean the air conditioner. I thought you meant me. <laughs> Well, that's important to make a distinction there. Anyway, folks, uh, thanks for tuning in for the handful of people who are here and those who just left. Two people popped in and left. Sorry about that. Anyway, um, yeah, so um, so tens. Ten players, uh, and you have two ten-minute halves. So, you know, in sevens, you have six or seven-minute halves, depending on, on what level of play you're at and where you're going. So you get two ten-minute halves, ten players, and it's a bit like rugby league in some respects because, you know, when the ball is put down, you don't really see people line up over it. They just quickly bring it back into play. 
But uh, I will say that um, it's a game you can still have a rolling mall in it. The Ohio Aviators had an amazing rolling mall. It, it served them quite well in this tournament. They got to the final. And they actually had a 14-0 lead in the first half over SX-10. SX-10 was the Africa team. It is a faster game, Erica, but not as fast as 7s. Um, it's kind of a mix between the two. And that would make sense. You know, you're between 10 and 15, or between 15 and 7. So, yeah, it was uh, interesting. And it took place in Bermuda. And as I said, Braun von, Braun von Schraden was invited to go to it. Um, <laughs> he's watch. He's going to play on his PlayStation. All right, well, thank you, Henry. I appreciate it. Hi, Lynn. Um, I'm looking rested. I feel tired. I, I, I thought I looked kind of tired. Bags under my eyes. Both my eyes got bags under my eyes today. But thank you for saying that. Must be poor lighting here. You can't really see it very well. Anyway, so, uh, yes, yeah, so you got tens and um, the uh, the Ohio, 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 Ohio Aviators um, helped jet out to a 14 and nil lead in the first half of that game. And then just the very end there, they made a mistake, and the Kenyan made him pay for it. He blazed down the field, picked up a try, and they ended the half at 14-7. Second half, Ohio never scored. Um, the uh, SX-10, the Africa team, came back and did an amazing job and took the ball up and down the field, dominated in the second half the way that the uh, Ohio team dominated the first half. Uh, but what's interesting is that um, the game was decided right at the end. The uh, the uh, the African team, SX-10, had the ball, and they were moving up the pitch, but there was a knock-on, and uh, it was in their end, and probably about uh, 30 meters up. And then the Aviators got the ball, and they started driving up, and great passing from side to side to side, and offloads until somebody got to the far right side. <laughs> he tried to offload, and he offloaded, and bounced off his hip, and rolled into touch. And it looked like, well, that's the game, because as soon as it hit in touch, then the hooter went off, and like, game's over, and the ref said, no, 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 game's not over. Must be something else than the laptop. Uh, lots of disturbance lately in your channel. Yeah, there are. I think it's a laptop, though. I think it is the laptop, Ron, um, because um, I have never. Uh, well, I, I have used this before, so I, yeah. It's. I don't know why it wouldn't work. I've used my laptop to stream before. It's interesting. But you know what? I didn't use Streamlabs. Maybe that's the problem. Maybe I shouldn't use Streamlabs. But if I don't use Streamlabs, then I can't bring in the. Um, I can't bring in the phone call. So. Uh, when I've used my laptop before and I used it with the audio, it was months ago. And it was just me using YouTube Studio, so I don't know. It's weird. Uh, I'll go to Best Buy and see if I can't find somebody who knows what they're doing, or, or we'll just use the mobile, but I won't be able to make any interviews. So fortunately, I don't have an interview set for tomorrow or for Monday. So, But this is a problem. I mean, if, if I'm going to do this, and if I come to South Africa, I have to fix this. This this can't this can't be like this. This is a real problem. So, uh, Brian von Strapp was your high school teacher in Athens. Wow, Dirk, that's cool. Well, he let me down today. <laughs> I don't know where he's at. I don't know where he's at. Argentina. Yeah, Argentina beat the All Blacks. I missed it. I was on the road. I couldn't watch it. I was driving. Uh, otherwise, I would have gotten a ticket. So, yeah. Um, yeah, wow. Uh, I tell people the All Blacks are not that impressive. They're not that impressive. They are due for coming down. So, the Springboks had already gone up uh, points without even playing. They're going to go up even more points because uh, the All Blacks will lose points for losing to the uh, Pumas. So, that'll be awesome. So, even though the Springboks suck and they haven't played in a year... They're advancing in the rankings, although England will, will move up a few, I think. So that's interesting. Anyway, yeah, pretty cool stuff. The, um, so the, uh, the, the SX-10 had the ball. They knocked it on. The Ohio Aviators got it. They were driving down, got about seven meters from, from the try line, knocked it into touch, and like, oh, it's all over. The Hooter goes off, and the ref says, no, 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 you got to do a line out. There was still time. So uh, the SX team does a line out. And they throw it in. <laughs> and when they throw it in, they overthrow the entire line. And Dylan Fawcett, who plays for Rugby United New York, played for the USA Eagles last year. Dylan Fawcett comes blazing up, catches it right in hand, and drives forward. Gets to about the two or three meter line before he's tackled. Almost got in. And went, game on. It looked like this is going to turn. Looks like this is going to turn. Well, Kate, it's not the first time. Um, it's, it's a bit disappointing, too, because the whole time he was in Bermuda, he kept, we kept talking about him coming on the channel or me just doing an interview. I just you know call him up, record an interview, and then play it later on. But um, he was so busy there that we never got around to that. So, yeah, it was a bit disappointing. Uh, Flying Boar, thank you for the super chat. I appreciate it. Um, yeah, so it was, it was disappointing that Brahma never got with me. But he's busy, so I mean, I, I'm not going to give him a hard time for that. But he did tell me he's back now, and, and he agreed to come on today so we could talk about Bermuda 10. So... Kind of disappointing. But anyway, um, what are you going to do? Uh, do you think Trump can still win, says Lawrence? Yeah, I do. I do think Trump can still win. I think, in fact, um, I don't want to say it's in the bag, but I definitely think he can still win. Let me get my face. Where's that camera at? 
there it is. Okay. Yeah, it's weird because the camera's over here at the top, so I have to keep looking to the left of the phone. Not you, Your natural tendency is to look at the center of the device, but actually the camera's over here. So if I look at the center of the device, then my eyes are off center. <laughs> anyway, so, yeah, uh, Lawrence, I think he still win. So the um, so Dylan Fawcett drives up, gets tackled, and it's still looking good. So they're working it back, working it back. When's the interview with Victor Matfield? Well, Link, Linky Ovagi, you're going to have to ask Victor Matfield for that. He's... He's a very difficult person to coordinate an interview with. Um, he, he responds to my messages five days after I write them all the time. And uh, I don't know what the latest is in that. So, yeah, maybe my channel's running out of steam. Maybe nobody cares about it anymore. They don't want to come on the channel. <laughs> yeah, so anyway, yeah, so um, Dylan Fawcett's tackled. They get the ball to move it back and forth, offloads, um, phase after phase after phase, and then someone throws the ball away. SX10 catches it. They kick it out of bound into touch, and the game is over. Quite a finish, uh, quite a finish to the uh, Bermuda Tens and the uh, Africa team, which looked pretty, uh, pretty um, scrappy in the beginning, not very good. Got together and won the whole, won the whole thing. The team probably most disappointing is the London Royals because they played the Ohio Aviators three times, and they lost. They beat the Ohio Aviators. They beat the Ohio Aviators, but then in the round robin knockout, they played them a third time, and Ohio won. Ohio used its rolling mall to great effect. In fact, the player of the, the, player of the uh, tournament played for Ohio, the Canadian rugby player, drawing a blank in his name right now. But, yeah, there you go. So it was uh, pretty interesting. That's the Bermuda Tens, folks. Now, what you, you may or may not know about the Tens um, is that, yeah, it was 25 to 15. The, the Pumas beat the All Blacks. It was awesome. Um, so, um, yeah, I, what you probably don't know about the, 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 the Tens is that they set the Tens up so that you, when you do a conversion kick, you get to pick a spot on the field. It doesn't matter where you score the try at. You could score all the way in the corner and still kick right in front of the post, but you just get one point. If you go further out, you get two points. If you go to the sides further out, you can get it like five points. You can kick it from half, half the field to get five points. So you can get 10 points for a try. It's awesome. Anne-Marie says, uh, have Waldo's manager given access to him yet? Um, I have not heard from That's another person I haven't heard from, Anne-Marie. No, I haven't heard from Waldo since I last wrote to the guy. No idea. No idea. He never wrote back to me. Um, and while we're at it, the, the beauty person, Amory, never wrote back to me. So she never wrote back to me. Walden never wrote back to me. Victor Matfield is answering every five days. Um, what else? What else? Um, there's a few others. So, yeah, anyway, so there you go. It's uh, not been a particularly uh, productive time frame. See, people are disappearing. Sorry, I'm in a hotel room. I don't have the glitzy studio for you. Apologize for that. But, you know, it's, you can't control everything. Uh, for those who don't know, just to understand why, why I'm sitting here like this, my mother uh, took a turn for the worse, and she's emaciated. They took her to hospital on uh, Thursday, Wednesday or Thursday. I think it might have been Wednesday. And um, what is this? Uh, Lawrence says, I find it strange the USA is bad at rugby, yet American football, which is so much sports, very popular. We're not bad at rugby, Lawrence. We're incredible. We have the, one of the top sevens teams for both men and women, and we have a top five women's national side on 15s. In 15s, we were a top 12 side, and we had a, an 8 or 9 and 0 test season just two years ago. Um, we're not terrible. We just never get to play against the big guys because the system's set up by the old boys club from England. And the old boys, look, look who runs world rugby, Sir Bill Beaumont. Where is he from? England. And all the powers that be run it. And so that's the deal, folks. Uh, the U.S. is not bad. It, it, we have lots of players who play in Europe and in the, uh, the Guinness Pro 14 League, also in the Premiership. Um, Blaine Scully will be on my channel next week, folks. USA Eagle captain who was in Japan. Uh, he'll be on my channel next Thursday. So tune in for that. That should be a good interview. I've been waiting to get Blaine on for a long time. I had to, had to needle him because he's quite busy uh, getting things going. Thanks for the prayers for my mom. Yeah, so back to that story. So with my mom, um, yeah, so uh, took a turn for worse. She was emaciated down to 93 pounds, which is, that's really thin. She's tall. She's six feet tall. So 93 pounds is just skeletal almost. Um, so my sister's a bit panicked. Um, she, my mother's in constant pain. They took her to the hospital, and then they, they didn't have a bed for her. Not because of COVID, just because piss poor, you know, management of the hospital. So they eventually got a bed for her, put her in. Uh, she's supposed to have a procedure on Tuesday so that they can uh, feed her directly uh, because uh, she's not able to eat well because of the, the chemo that she's been getting. It makes her nauseated, and, um, and she doesn't have the appetite. She knows she has to eat, and she tries, but she can't. She just can't, can't do it. So anyway, thank you all so much for your thoughts about my mom. I appreciate that. Uh, I'll be going to see her as soon as I finish here. I'll change, put some uh, slacks on, and head over to the hospital and um, and see my mother. And I haven't seen her in a year, so uh, we came down here last year um, after we knew she had cancer. Yeah, it's a very low weight, Erica. 
after we knew she had cancer last year. So um, I was here last year for, well, I, I came before Thanksgiving. You know, for those uh, outside the U.S., um, Thanksgiving is the, thir the third Thursday of every November. Is it third Thursday or last Thursday? Anyway, it's towards the end of the month every year, and um, it's on that Thursday. So last year uh, came the week before Thanksgiving, and uh, it was actually it was a good thing I did because I came and saw my mother before the weather changed and we got snow. So I was here date-wise two days after this last year. So around this time, the 16th is when I came down last year. Chris Norby, um, yes, we missed the glitzy world map behind you. <laughs> Hope all recovers. All the best to you. Yeah, guys, uh, I had a glitzy thing behind me. I had the, I had the whole world behind me in my Zoom. I put, I put a, um, you know, a, a template behind me, and if we'd had the Zoom working, it, for those who were over on the Zoom, you first saw it. Couldn't hear me, but you could see the glitzy uh, globe behind me there. So anyway, well, thank you all so much, Bram, Janssen from Hunsburg, and everyone, thank you, uh, all you guys, for saying nice prayers for my mom. I appreciate that, and I'll share that with her, because my mom's been on the channel before. Um, she was in the chat early on in the show, for those who've been around a long time. And uh, my mother also was a frequent guest on the Truckers Independent Radio Network, which is a, um, a live stream. And um, she got me to do that. So um, dry, salty crackers. My brother also went through it. Uh, thank you, Anna-Marie. Yeah, so um, she's, she got me to go on that program, but she's been on a frequent, as a regular um, contributor on that program, one of the main people. But uh, she's had to back away because she's just not capable of doing it anymore. But uh, she'd also moved recently in a house down on the river, uh, the, Mus uh, the, what is the Muskingum River, I think it is. Um, down in um, Morgan County, Pencil or, uh, Pennsylvania, Ohio. So I'm coming to you live from central Ohio today, not central Pennsylvania. <laughs> no, my mother knows about the beard. She knows about the beard. Funny thing, though, my brother um, came up, and um, my brother came up, and uh, she had been asleep, and she hadn't seen him. He came up because my sister was panicking a little bit, and uh, he drove up from Tennessee. He got here, so my mother woke up after being asleep for several hours. He was sitting in the room, and she goes, You're not Jennifer. And he said, well, I'm glad to see you still have your faculties about you. <laughs> oh, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Thank you, Dirk. Uh, Dirk, I appreciate it. Um, Chris, did you warn your mother? Yeah, I did do that. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Marguerite. Thank you all very kindly. I appreciate the warm thoughts. Um, yeah, folks, um, I don't know. Did you catch some videos? I did a bunch of videos last night after I got to my hotel. Uh, after I finished the stream yesterday, I taught. Then I did the stream. I, la I packed and I drove. I drove, I couldn't go too far in the dark, folks. This time of year, the deer are moving, and it's just carnage. I used to go up to Allentown uh, to watch uh, hockey frequently, and I had to make sure I got up there before it got dark because I could count the deer carcasses. Last year, on one of my trips to Allentown, I counted over 150 dead deer that had been hit by vehicles on the way up there in an hour and a half drive. Coming back the other side, I count over 200. So that was about 400 deer that were wiped out in that one stretch of about, I don't know, about, what's that, about um, 120 kilometers. It's just crazy. Um, so on this, on this way, um, coming this way last night, I was concerned about the dark, but I was on the turnpike, which is a toll road, and it was pretty busy. So um, the deer kind of stayed away from the highway for the most part. But once I got off the road, which is about seven after the dark, um, yeah, let's see, Tony says, one hunting trip, I count 21 dead deer in a seven-hour drive. No, I've counted 150 in, in an hour and a half drive, and I've counted over 200 on the other side of the same highway in an hour and a half drive last year. That's insane. It's just, I don't know. I mean, it was the year before, but it's just crazy. So there's so many deer. There are way too many. Anyway, um, hitting a deer is not a good thing, folks. People die. Um, your car gets totaled. It's really a bad experience. So anyway, so I, don't, I have a personal rule. I don't drive in the Midwest or in, 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 in the Northeast at night from October to December because that's when the deer are moving. So anyway, last night my, my decision was was warranted. I stopped. Uh, I had a hotel reservation. I stopped, and um, the good news I used my points didn't have to pay for the hotel. And then I um, I took off this morning early, and <laughs> within uh, ten kilometers I already seen I already saw four dead deer. One just obliterated. It looked like a, it looked like a uh, uh, an abattoir. I mean there were just deer carcass parts all over the road, blood everywhere. It was a mess. That thing just must have been hit by a semi, like broad head on. And just poosh, all over the place. Yeah, it was pretty crazy. So it kind of put me in mind of, uh, of uh, Monty Python, the Holy Grail. The, do you see it? It's over there. What? What are you talking about? Well, it's just a rabbit. It's a rabbit. The rabbit. Ah! <laughs> so, of course, Monty Python had to resort to the Holy Hand Grenade. <laughs> he had to pull the manual out. First, thou pulleth the pin from the Holy Hand Grenade. <laughs> then throweth. Anyway, yeah, so, um, yeah, just uh, not as many as normal, but I did see 
six or eight deer within the first 10 kilometers right after where I stopped. So if I'd have kept on last night, good chance I might have ran into one of those deer. So this morning after I passed that, I got into Ohio and I saw a few deer here. So uh, Tony says, hunters should control the herds of these. I hit a deer in a Dodge Ram 1500. Yeah, it sucks. It sucks. Um, the problem with deer, folks, which a lot of people don't realize, there, there are more deer in the United States and North America today than there were when Europeans arrived in the 17th century. True story. Absolutely true story. And the reason for that is because we've created a perfect habitat for them. Deer had to contend with forest. The forest doesn't do deer any good other than the hide. They can't eat. There's nothing to eat because they eat grass. They're ruminants. They're just like cattle. They eat, you know, the cattle and springbok, they, they eat grass and they process grass. So, and weeds, there's, there's almost none on the forest floor. So forests don't really help deer out. So they had to find a few open glades here and there back in the day before before Europeans arrived because the Native Americans didn't farm a lot of space. They farmed some, but they didn't use a lot of the land. So when, when Europeans came and started clearing plots in New England, what they did is they'd leave the trees around it for border mar to mark borders and also for additional timber and firewood. They wouldn't cut all the trees down. And so that made a great place for deer to hide. And then the deer would hide there, rest there, and they would come out and eat in the fields and the grass or the crops during the day. So we have created a perfect environment for deer to to live in. So what happens is they reproduce. Some years it's a particularly good year and they go crazy. And the, the, the deer herd in, in, in the Midwest just doubles, triples, quadruples in a single year. And there's like, you know, it could be between 30, 40, 50, 60 million deer. It just can be insane. And then of course they overpopulate. So they get disease, they die off, yada, 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 all that stuff. So it's a big deal. So if, if you're smart, and if you can avoid it, you don't drive in Pennsylvania or the Northeast or Ohio from October to December after dark. Just not smart thing, folks. Everybody keeps talking about bill tongue. I'm not eating roadkill. <laughs> I'm not making bill tongue out of roadkill. That ain't going to happen, folks. Just not going to happen. Anyway, yeah, so <laughs> not going to happen. Let me see if he ever showed up uh, here. I'll go back to my meeting here. Let me see something real quickie. Yeah, still not there, so I just went back to it. It's only computer audio. So anyway, yeah, I've got that meeting going, but nobody's in it, so I just popped it over there, so just to see, but he never came, so anyway. Yep. All right, I'm going to end the meeting. I don't need to have the thing running just for the heck of it. So yeah, folks, um, dear, bad mojo, bad mojo. Ronaldo here. How you doing? Uh, well, Ronaldo, I'm, I've driven six hours from uh, central Pennsylvania to central Ohio. So I'm in Central Ohio, which is where I went to high school, and uh, Southeast Ohio went to university a couple of times. And I'm sitting in my hotel where my laptop would not play the audio, no matter what I did. I don't know why. Got the um, Zoom to play the um, to play the uh, video, but I couldn't get the audio to play. So I, I canceled that stream, and Bram von Straten didn't show up for the meeting. So get a Mac. It's not a Mac. <laughs> Stop. Listen, Ronaldo, you and your rich white people toys, man, I've told you. Macs are garbage. I've worked with Macs, and they're just as unreliable as Windows is. Um, this is a hardware problem. It's probably not a Windows problem, so I've got to sort this out, but I'll find someone to help me out with it. Anyway, so welcome to you, Ronaldo. Um, good to see you there. That would be false. Um, Ronaldo, stop spreading your fake news. <laughs> uh, online Optics says, dear, yeah, they need to be controlled here in Scotland. Too. Oh, yeah, they can be. Now, I've been fortunate. I haven't had too many trouble with them, but stags can be a real problem in Scotland as well. That's a good point. Herr Janza von Rinsburg says, Good evening to your Chris White tribe. May best wishes to mom. Well, thank you, Herr. Bye bye, donkey. I'll make sure she knows that. I mean, she recognizes some of you folks, those who've been around for a long time, like Erica and Hendo, um, my mom and Bosch Zebra. My mom recognizes those names because she's seen you in the chat before when she's watched the program. So, yeah, I'll mention to her. I'm sure that'll, that'll, she'll, she'll appreciate it. Hey, Nigel, good to see you there. Yeah, dear me. Ha ha ha. There you go. It's funny. Anyway, folks, yeah, so um, here it is Saturday. Um, sorry about the guest. I don't know what happened. Brom didn't get back. This is the problem. This is why I'm, I'm reticent to, to have guests that I don't have contact, you know, a mobile number for because I just can't call them. So I don't have a mobile for him. Um, Ronaldo says, strongs to your mom, bud. Send her a lot. Of, I will. I will. Thank you, Ronaldo. I appreciate that. Speaking of which, Ronaldo, um, looks like you and I were the only ones aced out, my friend. There was a secret bry in Pretoria. And uh, since I guess since you're Nelson Mandela Bay and I'm not down there, but apparently um, Joe Emilio and Jeremy Nell and Roman all went to Herman Roos' place and had a braai. I saw a picture of um, Joe Emilio who had a steak that was the size of a 
a small dog. It was huge. It's bigger than Carter. That's how big his steak was. Anyway, so looks like Ronaldo and I are the ones not there. So Tony says, what the biggest difference are you noticing in that area of Ohio after all this time? Here it's billions in road construction. Well, it's not all that time, Tony. I was here last year. Um, but you mean compared to when I was a young kid? <laughs> Ronaldo says, yeah, there's probably a COVID bug. But yeah, no doubt. <laughs> no doubt, Ronaldo. <laughs> no doubt about it, man. Yeah, yeah, that's right. That's right. Texan steak. Oh, there you go. Underscore, underscore. It was definitely a Texan steak. Yeah, this is going to be a pretty strappy couple of days here, folks, um, with these uh, with my guests not showing up and uh, me not doing the regular streams. Oh, by the way, the, uh, the space launch is tonight. Um, I'll try to cover that, but if I can't fix the audio, it's not going to be much point. That's why I didn't set the stream up. So anyway, so we'll see what happens with that. But I'll try to do that tonight, folks, if I can make it happen. I'll cover the, uh, the, uh, the stream tonight. Uh, with the uh, with the launch of the rocket ship into space once again, Bosch Zebra says send her all the best. Strong's cool that she knows about Bosch Zebra. <laughs> yeah, it is cool. Uh, if Trump wish, wins, prepare for the mother of all riots. Uh, no. Oh, if Trump wins, yeah, 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 uh, yeah. The opposite won't happen. But if Trump wins, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's all over the place, folks. Um, uh, they they keep uh, writing it off as if it's over. It's interesting because, you know, just a few weeks ago, Hillary Clinton told Joe Biden he should never concede. It doesn't matter. Don't concede. Force them to do recounts. Make sure they look at the ballots. Don't let Trump steal the votes. That was Hillary Clinton just a few weeks ago. Um, and the Democrats. Uh, SIG 360 Springfield held camp for concealed carry. Ooh. Oh, okay. SIG. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm a SIG, SIG, uh, SIG Sauer kind of fan. So those are good choices. Uh, Anne-Marie says, I guess you can't check emails. I can? Why, Anne-Marie? Why can't I check my emails? Have you sent me something that I need to check? <laughs> By the way, folks, uh, for those who are curious, the Super Chat uh, with um, with my um, PayPal worked. Um, Olaf, uh, yours came through. Um, Tunes, yours came through as well, but I got charged a fee. They took a third of the money for a fee. With uh, with Olaf, they didn't take a fee. So I'm going to have to ask Olaf how he did it and then ask Tunes how he did it, find out how people did it because a fee was taken out. That sucks. I'm glad they took it out of the one from Tunes. That was a smaller one. But uh, they took a third of it, which is, that's just sucky, sucky, sucky. But, uh, yeah, in case someone's curious, because folks kept saying, well, why don't you get PayPal? Well, I have PayPal. I've had it since the very beginning. Oh, yes, I have a few messages here. One from Jaja, one from Lynn, one from HBM Air. And I don't see anything at all from Anna Marie now. Or, for that matter, Anna Marie Forster. <laughs> I don't see anything here. Nothing at all. So maybe it's in another mail account. Oh, there's Brown. Okay. Um, uh, yeah. Sorry, folks. I'm writing to Bram now. Anyway, so... Sorry, I'm just letting him know that. Anyway, he wrote to me 11.30, so about eight minutes ago. So anyway, he's joined my meet. Okay, well, let me, <laughs> I don't know how we can do this. Let me try this. Um, I'll try, he's getting a Zoom session. He came in, so. All right, let's do this. Um, how does he get in my session if I haven't started it? That's weird. Okay, that's, anyway, join with audio there. He's not there. I don't know how we could possibly do this, folks. <laughs> All right, so, um, yeah. Anyway, what I'll try to do is I'll try to get Brom to, um, to just come on with me, and I'll, we'll, do, we'll, do the, um, we'll do the recording, and then I'll just upload it. You won't be able to watch it live, so sorry about that. But it says he joined the meeting. I don't know how he possibly joined my meeting when it isn't there. I just restarted it. Oh, here we go. All right, so he's trying to come into my meeting now. Uh, well, Dirk, we're working on it, so we'll see what happens. Um, I don't know if it's going to work. I don't know if he's going to be able to hear me or not. Brom, can you hear me? Um, I can see. Yes, I can. Okay, I can hear you too. Um, let me do this. Uh, <laughs> this is really weird. Uh, my software is not working properly, so what I'm going to try to do is the following. Uh, I'm going to do something really ho uh, hokey here, if it's okay with you. I'm going to turn my mobile so that it's watching the laptop, and um, it's not ideal, but if, 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 do you mind if I try that? Yes, more than welcome. All right, well, let's see what happens to see if people can hear. Okay, guys, uh, what's, what's Ronaldo saying there? Hang on, what's that? Ronaldo, what's this? Okay, Ronaldo says working because, oh, 
Oh, Ronaldo Hoz is trying to tell us the reason this is working because he's, his Macintosh is connected to his train. Okay, sec, for sec, Ronaldo. <laughs> okay, um, let me see. Uh, why are we seeing me there? Oh, wait, okay, here we go. I can see myself in the mirror. So, oh, I can actually use the mirror and I can use this. Hang on. All right. There we go. All right. Okay, so now you guys can see uh, Bram von Straten, okay? Bram, I can see you, and uh, we can have a conversation like this if it's all right with you. <laughs> Perfect, no problem. It's, it's, it's weird looking at myself. Yeah, it is kind of, I'm sure it is kind of weird. Well, I, I'm, also, I'm sitting in front of a mirror in a hotel using my mobile, projecting onto my laptop and feeding it over the stream. <laughs> so let me, okay. let, let me peek for just a second and see if that's working all right. Um, hang on a second here. Uh, where's it at? Yep, there it is. Okay. All right, cool. <laughs> okay, so it's working there. Okay, all right. Well, Brom, welcome to the stream. Uh, I guess you got hung up, uh, so people tuned in. So um, uh, are, are you able to stick with us for a bit now? Yes, I'm, I'm able to speak with you. I'm so happy I could. Yeah, just sorry about that, Chris. Uh, yeah, just a couple of things that I needed to sort out. No, nah, it's all right. This is, um, I, you know, Brom, uh, people don't, I don't think people know that I, I don't have your mobile, and this is why I always insist on having people's mobile because that way I can get a hold of them. Let me see. Okay, that looks better. All right, good be good deal. All right, Brom. So what we're going to talk about today, uh, for those who don't know, Brom von Straten, a former Springbok, uh, also uh, well-known rugby coach uh, of late with the Southern Kings, who unfortunately were liquidated. Uh, but uh, don't tell anybody. Apparently, I'm getting a Kings jersey. So anyway, but uh, yeah. So um, he uh, was with the uh, SX10 team that went to the Bermuda Tens, and um, I was explaining to people about the Tens. It's it's a bit different. And, and somebody said, well, I guess it's a lot like sevens. I said, yes and no. When I look at it, uh, Brown, when I watch the play, it's, it's, it reminds me a little bit of rugby league um, because, you know, you don't really, you don't see people, um, when the ball is put down, you get back and play pretty quickly. But you do still have rolling malls and, and it's, it's faster, but it's not as fast as sevens. Does that sound like an accurate description or no? Yes, uh, Chris. Yeah, sorry, I just want to correct you there. Um, I was with the Phoenix guys. Oh, Phoenix. oh, I thought you were that SX10. Uh, SX tens were the guys that actually won the tournament at the end, but we put them a little bit under pressure in that semi final. So yeah, I, I was with a with a very quickly put together Phoenix uh, tens guys. Uh, it was a fantastic time. We we had an, all, an unbelievable time in Bermuda, and yeah, it was it was it was really good for us. Um, uh, putting that team together was was brilliant. And uh, your question was, um, yeah, it, it's a little bit different than sevens. It's a little bit different than fifteens as well. We're still trying to find out what, what exactly works, and, and <laughs> it gives more people the opportunity to play the game, and that, that's what you're all about. Um, it's a, it's got, got some different different rules as well, which was quite quite interesting. You've got the kicking jeopardy, where you get different points from converting from different spots, and yeah, that was brilliant. I, I tell you, some of the teams um, won some of the games with their kicking jeopardy, and uh, like uh, you saw uh, my, my kick uh, against the... Uh, um, the rhinos um, that I that I kicked the first penalty of the game um, late in the games just so to won it so it was yeah it's a great concept I think it's going to go a long way and, and yeah I think it's more more prone to the American market and especially the youth market. All right, well let me get a couple things straight. Okay, so I was completely wrong. I thought you were at the SX10, so you were at Phoenix, and you weren't coaching. You played. Yeah, I was. I was actually the only coach uh, because we had uh, ran into a little bit of trouble. Some of the coaches were supposed to join me from from South Africa ran into trouble with some visas and um, they couldn't come so um where team normally has four coaches which is a coach assistant coach a manager and a snc i was all in one and um, so yeah it was it was grand uh, I, I didn't see a lot of the island this time around but it was it was it was grand the, the boys enjoyed it so tremendously uh, i got stuck in my room with a bit of uh, admin every day but it was all, all together it was an incredible experience uh, just the team came together unbelievably well. The Phoenix boys from five, six different countries was exceptional. The team spirit was unbelievable, and that's why we did so well. No, I know it's pretty amazing stuff. I mean, I, I, I came to like you very quickly, but let, let's tell people about this kicking jeopardy before, before you explain. So here's the deal. I mean, you can get like 10 points for a try. You get five for the try, and if you kick from a long distance, which was done by the Ohio, Ohio Aviators did that, among others, you get five points, but if you and, and it really doesn't matter where you score the try because you get to pick where you kick from, and it goes from one to five points. Is that correct? That is true. Yes. So you get the the, 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 the one pointer right in front of the sticks, very close. Then you get a two pointer right on the fifteen on the twenty two, 
Um, the three-pointer is a little bit more difficult uh, out on the 15 on the 10-meter line, which is quite a difficult kick. And then you get the one from halfway line stack in the, stack in the middle. And yeah, so you can all, all of a sudden, you'd, like you said, we can get 10 points for a try. What a, and, they, and it was quite, quite clever in the way they did it. So um, teams got ahead against the wing to take the one point, and then with the wing, they took a, the five-pointer, which uh, got, them, got them ahead. No, it's quite brilliant. I mean, it's definitely, it, it adds a great degree of tactical planning to the game itself. I mean, because wherever you play, there's always, almost always going to be an issue with wind on one end of the pitch or the other, or maybe it's coming from the side. So, so you've got to be smart about which half it is or whether you, which end you're on each side. So I, it was, I thought it was kind of weird and a strange addition, but then watching, I was like, this is cool. I think I like it. It's very cool. I think that it will go a long way. It's like if you think about test cricket and you think about T20, this is right, right stuck in the middle as a 50-over game. But, yeah, it's, 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 it's been played by, by, by different sizes of players, which is really, really good. So um, everybody gets an opportunity, five forwards, five backs. Um, there's, uh, and again, like I said, it's quite difficult. You're not, you're not 100% sure of, of how to play. I, I think we, we got it right. We, we played with a lot of intensity, uh, our team. We kept it really simple. Um, and um, and that, that got us um, to, to, to really put teams under pressure with ball in hand. Yeah, no, it's uh, it's pretty uh, pretty uh, interesting stuff. I think that was one of the most fascinating aspects of it. But what I think was also fascinating for me is that, of course, you see a lot of sevens players go play 15s. You see a lot of that. Uh, of course, say about the Sonatlas, one a good example of that. And there's plenty of them there. Um, Van der Kolk is another one, uh, and a few other players. But uh, but and Ruan Nell. But but you know, this game you saw a lot of 15 players and sevens players mixed in this in between game. And it made for some fascinating rugby. I mean, Cecil Africa was out there from sevens. Uh, Dan Norton was out there. But you also saw Dylan Fawcett from 15s. And, and you play 15s a lot. It, it was an interesting mix, I think, of having players in this kind of in-between sort of game. Yeah, I think it's going to go a long way. I think that in the future, they're talking about having around about 10 tournaments around the world with 12 teams. And, and, and yeah, I think it's definitely going to kick off um, hopefully next year already. Um, yeah, it's been, a, it's been a fantastic time for the boys to be um, involved with the first one. And, uh, yeah, hopefully um, hopefully we can get uh, an opportunity to play around the world in the next uh, next couple of months. Now, the, the, the Phoenix team that you're with, uh, are they based somewhere? Because obviously I know where the Ohio Aviators, the London Royals, we know where they come from. Yeah, the, the Phoenix team comes out, it's actually, a, 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 we would be based in the Middle East. Okay. It's Phoenix Middle East, which is fantastic, but... Um, we, we had to put that team together because one of the teams that, that, that pulled out of the competition right at the, uh, well, at point 99, and I had four days to put everything together. Um, the, 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 the big trouble was just to, to, to get the record players to send their stuff through. Um, but apart from that, we got it sorted. Um, and yeah, I, I had to pinch myself when I was at the airport jumping on the plane to Bermuda. Well, actually, I was kind of excited, you know, <clears throat> when you told me about the tournament, I said, let me see if I can get there. And I actually found out that if I drive an hour and a half to an alternate airport, I can make a round trip for less than 200 bucks. Uh, but the problem was the COVID test. I mean, you got to have a COVID test and I, I couldn't get one scheduled. So, you know, plus I wasn't sure if they were letting spectators out there. It looked like the first uh, first couple weekends, I, I didn't really see many people. I wasn't sure if fans could go. But the last day, it looked to be like a lot of people there in the tents. I don't know if that was families or were there spectators. Yeah, the, the, the first two weeks, the, the, the Bermudian government didn't allow us to have spectators. But on the last day, they were allowed the 300 um, uh, in the, in the uh, corporate tents. So that, that, that was grand. Um, what talking about you, you just going through one the COVID test. We arrived in Bermuda um, on the, well, we got a COVID test right there and then. Um, within 24 hours, we got our test results back and then we could get out of our rooms. Um, then there was another four days. We had another one. Eight days later, we had another one. And 14 days later, we had another one. So, yeah, the, 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 the Bermudian government was absolutely exceptional in the way they, they've run it. Um, I, I had to, hats off to them because they, they made it happen in, in a very good, difficult time. Well, it's, uh, I look at the stats, and um, they, they're not having a major outbreak of it. It seems like they've got a good handle on what's going on there. And I guess, of course, key to that is keeping tourist con uh, arrivals under control so you don't bring it in. But uh, I'd say that based on the numbers, it looks like Bermuda's doing pretty well thus far with COVID. No, they, they, they've done exceptionally well. I think uh, just the way they went about it and the efficiency of their staff and their government, uh, the health officials that got it done. I think uh, so. We, we would go in in the morning, um, and by by late afternoon, early uh, before you go to bed, you, you get got your test back. So they are very efficient in the way they went about it, and the Bermudian government is taking care of all the 
all the, uh, the, the, the the payment of it. So you didn't even have to pay for it. But yeah, they, 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 and what was what was so incredible about it was you get there. They are so efficient. So they take. Well, I think the one day we arrived there, we ran about 50, 50 people within uh, within in the queue, and within less than ten minutes, we went through. Um, so wow. that's that's amazing. They 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 really did their homework, and uh, hats off to them. So this was this was like the inaugural uh, tens tournament to do this, correct? Yes, inaugural one, and um, yeah, hopefully hopefully within the next ne- next year, um, the, it will start uh, in in August uh, um, throughout. Uh, well, there's a bit of a window um, for the international rugby, and then that 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 window is from August till around about November, um, and then that, that's when the tournament will happen um, around the globe. So, is, is this uh, is this sanctioned or approved by World Rugby, or is this outside of World Rugby? This is the one that's outside World Rugby. I think, um, and that's a little bit of a. Um, I think it's good. It puts uh, it puts everything in perspective. The guys that have done it has done it incredibly well. And let's put a bit of pressure on World Rugby. I think it, 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 it's a time for, for to give a little bit back to the game. I think, um, and I can't say a lot about it, but I might get into a little bit of trouble if I do. But, um, yeah, I think the power to the people. No, I, I, I would not disagree with that. Uh, I have uh, been long known for uh, having issues with World Rugby, not the least of which is changing their name from International Rugby Board to World Rugby. It was the dumbest thing ever. Uh, not to mention um, naming both World Cups, men and women's, the Rugby World Cup. So we don't know which one it is now from year to year. <laughs> They're all called, it's no longer the Women's Rugby World Cup, it's the Rugby World Cup. Uh, but yeah, I, and also, uh, I've, I've also complained uh, frequently about World Rugby being the old boys club. And really, it's uh, um, uh, kind of set up so that the, uh, the big six nations continue to rule the rugby world. So um, you don't have to comment on that, Brown, if you don't want to. But uh, yeah, having been a Springbok, yeah, you know, the big six would include, would include South Africa and that, you know, England. And, uh, you know, anyway, so we'll, we'll leave it at that. But uh, um, I, I don't think they've done the best job managing the sport. I think it goes so much further. Not that I have any issues with Sir Bill Beaumont. I think he's a nice chap. I actually met him in Japan on the train going to a game. I, I went to go to the loo and I came back. I'm like, hey, Sir Bill Beaumont. <laughs> he's like, hey, how you doing? So we got a selfie and I uh, went to the game that night. But um, yeah, no, I just, um, so I, I agree with you. So maybe it's good to put a little pressure on World Rugby if, if this succeeds and does well. Also, um, Dan Norton was there, among others, from the Sevens. And England folded their Sevens team, which is tragic um, as a consequence of COVID-19. So it's good to see Dan Norton on the pitch. Yeah, definitely. Um, well, Mitchell was one of the other guys. And then the, the Essex Tens had, had, had William Barker, um, what's his name, um, the... Uh, what, I can't remember his name now, but one of the one of the well, they've had some incredible, incredible players. They they've been the strongest side there. Um, they 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 got lucky a little bit. They when they arrived in Bermuda, they they tested positive, so they went into quarantine for for a couple of I think for ten to twelve days. Yeah, and they only played in the in the last weekend and then in the finals. So they were a little bit fresher than the other sides. They didn't have so many injuries. Um, and yeah, so I think I think it it, it, it was a really good test. Um, like I said, um, it was it was quite interesting. For when I warmed up uh, to, to, and uh, everybody was looking at this grey old man uh, warming up to, to, to take the kick, I got onto the team sheet by accident because we, we ran out of numbers, and um, I just said, okay, now I'll put myself down as number sixteen, and and then sneaked onto the field to win it uh, in that in that in that quarterfinal. So yeah, it was it was it was grand, uh, lovely, lovely. It's, it's incredible at at my age when you get that opportunity to do it. You still love the love the pressure. Um, it was and it was it was so 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 much fun for for the boys and um, yeah it was it was it was I was so happy for them because of of the way they went about it the the, 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 the amount of energy they put into it um, yeah it was it was it was one of the best days of my of my rugby career. Well, that's amazing. Well, what we're going to have to do, Brahm, is uh, do a proper interview after this, okay? Since since we uh, didn't get to start this, and what we'll do is not not use my mobile reflecting on my laptop. <laughs> Who knows how the sound is? And I apologize, everyone out there. I can't I can't follow the chat because I'm I'm, I'm looking at it from behind. But anyway, thank you for that. But uh, folks, you're listening to Chris White Africa on the Daba Africa Channel. My uh, Saturday stream special feature guest today is Bram von Straten, former Springbok. Uh, well-known rugby coach and now once again on the pitch uh, out there for the tens tournament in bermuda we're talking about rugby tens in bermuda folks and i promise we'll have a proper interview to discuss all this so you can watch it at your leisure after this but brahm it was um you know it was covered by espn so i was able to watch it because i have espn plus and it was interesting to see but it was hard to figure out when it was on it was weird like a, a monday and a, a sunday and a monday with the days they were running these things it's kind of strange 
Yeah, I think what they what they had to do is they had to move the days around because of of the S extends one of the one of the strongest teams, and um, they, they tried to get them into the tournament, um, which was good, um, and and that and that that gave that gave the tournament another push. I think the the first first weekend was the was was really good, and there was an epic battle right at the end. The, the Rhinos won it, and were one of the five favourites, and um, and then the next weekend the London Royals won it. And, and and then we got the opportunity to play against the, the 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 winners of the first tournament in that in that quarterfinal, and like I said, I was I was so stoked that our boys played so well, um, and to manage to win that game against one of the favourites was, was was something epic. It, uh, it was it was just one of those days where you know we, we got the lucky bounces, we got the, the rub of the green from the referee, and all of a sudden you take the good with the bad. But uh, for us, it was good on good on good, and all of a sudden we we were in a, in a semi final. That semi-final was tough against the SX10s. So we ran out of steam uh, with a couple of, uh, of important injuries in our team. Uh, some of our game drivers got injured, um, which was which was uh, a little bit far, a little bit too far for the for the Phoenix boys. Yeah, no, I, that, I'm sure that they, they actually, in the end, because of the COVID, the SX10 guys actually have a bit of an advantage as you're getting out because they were fresh. Uh, <laughs> so, I mean, that's. Uh, but I mean, we have to deal with it. That's what we have to deal with. But uh, I saw Ben Foden was out there playing for the London Royals. Of course, he plays for Rugby United New York. So I'm a huge fan of Ben Foden. So it was great to see him on the pitch as well. Uh, I also saw him interview. What's what's I can't think of her name right now. The the Afrikaans, uh presenter, that that lovely young lady. Um, I can't think of her name. She was there doing interviews. Elma. Elma. Yeah, that's one. Yeah, yeah. She was doing some great interviews there. So let me ask you this: uh, Did did you guys play against Ohio? Because I didn't catch a game with Phoenix against Ohio. Yeah, we did play against Ohio in the first in the first weekend. Um, they were a good, good, good team. I think um, uh, Ben Cena, their they, they kick, uh, they kicker. Um, I saw how he how he actually um, uh, in that in that kickoff against uh, Matt Turner, he, he he actually lost the kickoff. And I, I went over to him and said, "Man, Ben, uh, you're such a good kid. And I, I, I love your style. I love the way you kick." And we had a little kicking session. Um, one one afternoon after their training session, and uh, after that, Ben kicked really well. So it's small little things that 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 make uh, that that makes rugby wonderful. And yeah, you know, I just saw the opportunity to give a little bit of information and uh, and uh, and something back to Ben. And uh, what is what is grand about the young man is that he still wants to learn, and um, and that's what rugby is all about: is about being open-minded and and helping people along the way. No, I absolutely agree. I think it's amazing. Uh, it, it, that's why I've always liked the game. Anyone can play the game. You know, it's 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 not reserved for any particular class or group of people. Anybody can get on the rugby pitch and play. And and it's it's what I've always liked about a Brahm is this. And this goes back to the first time I was ever introduced to it when I was a freshman at university. And one of the upperclassmen said, "You come into the game tonight." I'm like, uh, "It's Friday. The game's tomorrow." No, not football, rugby. I'm like. I'm from Appalachia. We're just happy to have electricity and paved roads, you know? He's like, no, come down. It'll be a lot of fun. So I went down there, and I had no idea what was going on, but I'm standing in touch watching the game. And, and uh, when it was all over, I mean, one side clobbered the other side. I don't know what the score was. It was probably like 56 to, to nil or something like that. But when they are all done, they all came on, over in touch, and they hung out, and, you know, arms over shoulders, grabbing a couple beers, you know, relaxing, chilling. And I'm like, this is a great game. People, you know, I mean, once I got trashed, I mean, other sports, you know, out there talking a bunch of nonsense and, but uh, it, it, the camaraderie, even even amongst uh, victors and those who don't win, is pretty cool. So that's one of the things I always liked about rugby, and I, th- I think that's a nice aspect of the game. Yeah, definitely. I think the ethos around the game is to to, to, to really be tough out out between the four lines. And when you get to get together in the pub or afterwards, we can all, all share, share share special mess, um, times together and, and have a beer. Um, I think um, in, in the older days, uh, everybody played the game to get a little bit of thirsty, and and, and, and that was good as well. <laughs> so yeah, no, I'm, I'm a little bit coming back back from um, um, a little bit of the old folk uh, that, that loves uh, the, to have the, the boys must have fun. I think you need to, as a coach, you need to have a, have a good hand and understanding of uh, how to balance the game. Um, to when you need to be serious, you need to be serious. And I tell you now, we had a we had a bit of a boat, boat cruise one night, and it was I tell you now probably the the best night of my life. Um, wow. The youngsters just absolutely loved it. But again, I have to make, make mention about a, a very good friend of us, Tony, in Bermuda. Um, he, he looked after us so well. He was like my manager. Um, oh, he just looked after the Kings boys so well. He bought us caps for our capping ceremony. He, he, he took us on that boat boat trip. Um, so, yeah, um, you get people like that, that, that just every time when we arrive in Bermuda looking after us. And so, yeah, we, we've been very fortunate. And... And yeah, that's why I say that that's what rugby gives you. It gives you people coming out of uh, of nowhere, 
with no um, animosity or anything, and they come to the party and, and, and really put their, put their hand in their pockets to be able to assist them, the Kings boys, especially that didn't have any, any salaries for the last two months. Yeah, that's right. Oh, by the way, uh, I wanted to ask you about that. Um, I was going to say that uh, for another interview, but uh, how is that going with the auction? I mean, it, did it go well? Did you guys, did you meet expectations or was it a little short or way over the top? How'd that go? Well, I think, uh, I think we, we, we met expectations. I think um, we, what we did, uh, we, we got the opportunity to pay out. Um, it's not a lot of money. It's, mm. it's 5,000 Rand to 31 uh, people, uh, players and staff. Um, we, we've got our wine auction this, uh, this coming weekend. Um, hopefully we can do it the same and pay them another five and then we've got our golf day with an auction and we've got a Christmas auction as well where we're looking at to, to pay everybody around about 10,000 Rand um, but again it's just to, for them to, to, get, to get them through the year give them the opportunity to get, a, get another job or another contract somewhere else and that's, the, and that's been our main focus but yeah, behind the scenes there's still some, some, some bigger things happening um, the, the Care for Kings campaign Will, will definitely be, be coming a lot bigger. We're looking to do a lot of things in the future. Um, I can't say too much about that now, but uh, hopefully in the new year, there will be a lot more uh, to come from uh, K for Kings. So, Brown, uh, for people, so they know, because uh, I don't think, uh, I think a lot of people aren't aware of this, to be honest, so that's why one reason why I want to mention it. So the Care for Kings auction is weekend. How can they find that? Uh, that's an online virtual auction, right? Online virtual auction, so you can go on to www.careforkings.co.za and you can register to be able to be part of the auction. And um, yeah, there, there, there's going to be some incredible wines. We've we've been blessed by so many wine farmers within the Cape, Cape region, especially um, Stellenbosch and the Pole. Um, so yeah, um, it's it, it's been incredible how people uh, came to donate. I think we at the moment we're standing on 147 uh, bottles of wine. Um, and I think we'll we'll get to run about 200 uh, eventually. So um, that's been uh, that's been amazing. So the the, the the wine will also be signed by by by, by some Springboks, um, and hopefully um, some of the big names will will be will will sign the, uh, some of the bottles uh, this coming week. Well, for us, Brom, uh, one of the big names is Brom von Schlatten, just to let you know. So <laughs> I hope you sign one of them. But uh, when you say Care for Kings, it's Care for with the number four is the symbol, correct? Not spelled out. Care for Kings. Okay. Number, sorry, yes, I, I should have said that. K with a number four, kings.co.za. No, no worries. I just want to make sure people go to the right place, you know, and, and if they want to check it out. Now, my question, this is the one This is the one that matters to me a lot. So was your blazer already auctioned off, your Springbok blazer, or is it still up on the table? It's still up on the table. Um, it didn't, did it, didn't get to, um, to the, what do you call it? The, the minimum? Yeah, the minimum. Um, and Yeah, so it's definitely up for, for auction. Um, and yeah, like I said, uh, Chris, and I think I said it to you last time, the things I stand for is a lot bigger than uh, a Springbok blazer. The things I stand for is honesty, integrity, hope, and love. And those things um, is much bigger than, 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 than a Springbok blazer. So hopefully people see, uh, see and understand where I come from and see my heart, because that's the most important thing, is how we can, can, can look after these, the, these people that's been affected by, 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 by the liquidation. Um, and uh, yeah, so hopefully, hopefully somebody buys that buys that jacket and, um, and and can tell the story of of uh, it's been worn by somebody that had really cared about not just his own, not just about himself, about about the people around him, the people he work he worked with, with and, and especially the players because, because the players I've seen how they uh, how they've grown in the last year and some of those players has been my family because they were the faces that I saw in the morning when I woke up and they they gave me the smiles so they are family and and in, in rugby. That is what we what we what we always say. If something happens, we don't leave anybody behind in enemy lines. We make sure we look after everyone till the last one gets an opportunity to be able to look after their family. Well, I can certainly relate to that because in the army, we don't leave anyone behind either. You know, in fact, uh, my government is so committed to not leaving people behind that we have an entire branch of the military base in Hawaii that that goes for remains of our our lost uh, soldiers. When I was stationed in Tunisia, we got a phone call at the embassy one day. I was working in the attache office, and they told us that they um, had uncovered um, a, an American plane, or a, a British plane, but they were concerned it might be American because it was an American aircraft from you know that we gave to the Brits. So what had happened is that near the power plant in Tunis, they, um, there had been a B-24, B-28. One of the, they, they crashed land in water. No one knew that because it was at night, and uh, all the crew perished, in the, in, 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 and then it was under the water. 
So they were digging up to expand the power plant. And when they dug up and they were dredging, they came across this. So what happened is they contacted us and, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> went out. Turned out it was an American crew. And um, they found their dog tags. They found identification. Um, and they also found their bodies. Um, and then uh, were able to repatriate the remains of the entire crew, uh, American air crew that died during the Second World War uh, over Tunis. Um, it's amazing. So, I mean, it's, I'm not trying to compare the two, but I mean, the point is that you never leave anybody behind. If, if it's your team, you take care of your team. And I think that's what you're trying to say, Brian. You take care of your team. Definitely. And again, again, the people that have been fighting for you and you've been fighting for them, I think that's the big thing. And, and, and that's the ethos that, 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 has, that, that has brought me to rugby. It's a special game. Um, it, it's indifferent, I think, than, than anything else that I've, that, that I've been involved with. But just the ethos and, 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 and the, the brotherhood that comes with the game, I think that's the most important part. Um, so that's why I say that we don't leave anybody behind. We make sure that we look after everyone. Now, I should say that, so that people understand, I, you did say it, but just to be clear, I, you're raising money to help out people who've been left in the lurch because this, this organization just liquidated and didn't even pay final paychecks. And, and we're not just talking about the players. You're talking about the staff. I mean, and that's the people that are often forgotten because the staff are the ones who are who aren't the celebrities or aren't well known particularly, and they're working behind the scenes, and they've got families to feed, and they were left high and dry as well. Yes, you're 100 percent right about that, Chris. So that, that that's been the, the the big issue for me because it wasn't our fault, and then I, that's the way I, I bring my my kids up. Man, if it's not your fault, and if you're not wrong, you stand your ground, and that's what I've been doing. I've been standing my ground because of of a man of principle. This this was was a thing that happened to us. Um, well, unexpected because three weeks prior to that, people told us that we will, they will honor our contracts. And three weeks later, they de- liquidating the company, putting the corporate under everybody. And that was for me the, the, the big thing. So, um, and that's why I stand my ground and I will keep standing my ground until we've looked after everyone and everybody has find something else with, with, uh, within the, well, either rugby or wherever. Um, and that, that's, that's my heart and, that, and, and I've got a lot of energy. Um, I, I'm, if, you, if you've known me a long time ago, Chris, uh, I'm quite a hard-nosed guy. Um, um, in Afrikaans, I think people will, will, will love to understand this. I'm, I'm a little bit hard when it comes to things like this. Um, <laughs> um, and, and for me, that is the, that, that, that's the honest truth. Um, uh, when, 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 when things go pear-shaped, normally people just uh, wait till the dust has settled and, and everything goes to pieces. But for, for me, I, was, uh, I, I said to myself, this can't happen. I'm going to stand up and make make sure that we, we our, our voice is heard, and and fantastic. It, it's been the people that have come come on board to help were incredible. Um, I tell you now, I, I, I'm gobsmacked. Um, just the love that they showed. Some of them of are, are some of my personal mates and some of my personal friends friends. Um, and and those are the things that really makes life worthwhile. It's people looking after each other and having a heart for someone else. Isn't that why we, we, we are human beings and, and why, why are we on this earth to, to serve and make people's lives a little better? Well, that's uh, a philosophy I believe in. Uh, apparently not, not everybody does, though, unfortunately. But, you know, I agree with you, absolutely. By the way, uh, extra points, Brom. Um, I think I'm the only person I've heard in months use the word gobsmacked. You're the second now, so well done. <laughs> I love that word. I, I, I use it a lot, but I haven't heard anyone use it in ages, in donkey years. So uh, it's the first time I heard anyone else say it. So thanks for that. Uh, so, so, yeah, no, excellent. Uh, the, um, the Bermuda thing was pretty cool, and that was all last minute, right? I mean, you were, like, asked to do this in really short notice. Yeah, so what happened is uh, on, a, on a Sunday afternoon at 20 past 2 in the afternoon, I got the message that I need to put a team together um, of uh, well, 12 guys. The other guys we, we, we would have met, met um, in, um, in Bermuda. Uh, three Scottish guys, three uh, guys from Ireland, two guys from Lithuania, and uh, two guys from America. Um, so I, I put everything together that night at 20, 20 to 12, I think. Um, I sent a, a message to, to the, the organizers and uh, yeah, got it all sorted. Everybody's passports, everybody's um, visas were sorted. Um, everybody where they need to travel from to get to Johannesburg in, 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 and, and then fly from there to, to the UK. Um, yeah, the next morning, I, I still I still pinch myself. I, I couldn't believe I got it right. Uh, a day later, um, they started issuing tickets and, and still I had to pinch myself. Because this was just one of those things that you, you can't believe is happening. And, the, and, and that's just having a little bit of faith, Chris. Uh, you know, uh, faith takes you a long way. And all of a sudden... When I, when, I, when I was looking up, uh, all of a sudden we were boarding the plane um, out of Gatwick to Bermuda. 
um, arrived in Bermuda. I still thought I, I still thought I was in a dream, but uh, <laughs> it was it was it was fantastic. It was probably the most enjoyable 16 days of my life, lives where you can just just get rid of all the shackles, all the things that happened back home. I think the players really enjoyed it to be to be out there. So that they can again do what they love and getting paid for it, and that that was that was the main focus of getting those boys to Bermuda and having a bit of fun. Well, absolutely, and I have to say this: I mean, you know, having done similar things, of course, in uniform, gathering resources and personnel from all over the world, uh, it's never easy. But imagine, and in, in, in the world of COVID, last minute. I mean, that's the sort of thing that uh, Brom, if. A lot of people would have put this together two or three months in advance, and there would have been a snafu. Somebody's visa would have been denied, or or somebody couldn't make it. But you got it all to work. Maybe you had a little help from above. I don't know, divine intervention, but it definitely worked. Chris, you said it, you hit the nail on the head. It was divine intervention. I'm getting goosebumps. <laughs> well, some of the things that happened was unbelievable. I, I thought, uh, and every time I got to an obstacle, there was a miracle, and there was a blessing, and another blessing, and another blessing. So yes, um, it was it was definitely um, from higher, from higher above, and the, the Lord definitely looked after us. And it was a divine appointment. We had to be, we had to go to Bermuda. We had to be there. We had to. I had to meet these guys from from all different countries. I had to put them together to be able to come to come a team. And and that was absolutely beautiful. Just some of the the, con, the conversations we had about well, what has happened. Some to, when we reflect on what has happened in Bermuda. These boys were absolutely brilliant. The way they came back and the the, 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 the messages that they sent me is just um, I'm 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 so humbled by by having the opportunity to do it and getting the messages from these boys just made me realize what an incredible opportunity it was and and like I like you said it happened uh, by chance or whatever you want to call it but there was definitely a higher hand helping us to to get to Bermuda. Well, I, no doubt about it. I mean, it's, I, whether you're a person of faith or not, you have to sit there and scratch your head. Something had to happen here. I mean, come on, this is it, it's kismet. It just, I mean, well done, bravo, uh, Brahm. This is amazing. Just to get a team on the pitch, you know, and then uh, sneaking yourself on the pitch to listen. If you're going to pull that one, you know, next time let me know so I can get a couple minutes of, of time on the pitch. <laughs> oh, Chris, it was it was fantastic. I tell you now, um, we we had a couple of injuries, and um, they said um, we you can have like a specialist kicker coming onto the field uh, to kick goals. And I thought, my, yeah, I can still kick the ball quite nicely. I've, 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 I've been, been to the kicking academy. I've, I've, I've run that for quite some time. And I've been kicking with the youngsters. As soon as I get challenged by them, I put the ball down on the team and I kick it straight as a dime. So it was it was brilliant to be able to get onto that pitch. And um, uh, eventually, we, when, we, when, we, when we got there, I kicked, I kicked the first goal. And the boys got into our head a bit of a timeout. And we said, just get the ball back or hold the ball. Just get the penalty, boys. Um, I'll win it for you. And uh, I, I, so, I was so confident. I was so confident that they would do it uh, because of the way they went about the whole week and the way they just kept on fighting, which which, which was fantastic. And yeah, you know, when I struck that ball, it was probably the best strike I've had in the in the number of years. It went straight through the middle. And and, and again, it's, it's it's one of those stories that I can tell. One day when I'm old and grey, while well, I'm already grey. <laughs> So one day when I'm old and grey, I can sit down with my with my kids' kids and tell them uh, at 49 year old um, kicked a goal a couple of times in Bermuda on the first uh, 10 World, uh, yeah, World 10 series. With what what an incredible story! No, that's absolutely amazing. Well, in interest of full disclosure, I, I can't kick very well, so I wouldn't be able to fill that role. Uh, I know that I cannot outrun Cecil Africa or Dan Norton, but I can outrun about half those oaks, and I can hit pretty hard. Uh, but after two or three hits, I probably have to be replaced. So I'm just saying. <laughs> no, definitely, no, definitely. But yeah, it was uh, like I said, it was such an incredible tournament at the right time for, for especially for the Kings boys to to get them out of that situation where they where they didn't know where to go, what to what to do. And yeah, hopefully, hopefully uh, it, we, it can happen again next year. We we've got the opportunity to to go back and and take some of those kids back there again and and, and enjoy the rugby life around the globe. All right, well, Brom, it's it's been great having you on. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna hold you to another proper interview because because you were tardy. So so I'm gonna hold you to that. But uh, I want to thank you for coming. I really appreciate it. We're, we're gonna cut it here. Um, and this has been a really strange interview with my mobile projecting onto my laptop. People chatting. I can see it on the screen, but it's so tiny because I'm looking at it from behind in the mirror. I really can't make out what they're saying. But I hope the audience has enjoyed it. What I'll probably do is go back and I'll, and I'll, I'll edit this uh, this program and just cut it to just the interview and then repost it.
But if we'll do it, we'll talk about this again sometime soon. Maybe uh, in the, later in the week this week, we can be back on and talk about Care for Kings and uh, the auction coming up. Is that a good idea? More than welcome. You, you just let me know, Chris, and we can definitely set it up. I want to just say that your, your jersey, um, your King's jersey, is in Bermuda with Tony. We'll make sure that you get it. I've got your, your, your address now. You sent it to me on mail. So you'll make sure that you get that King's jersey. Um, it's a number nine. I'm not sure it's going to fit, but, uh, yeah, it's one of those spray-on ones. Um, <laughs> not just joking. <laughs> Well, either, then, then, either I'll have to look like I'm Hercules or I'll have to lose a couple pounds. We'll see how it goes. But, uh, but no, it doesn't matter. As long as I've got a great one I can, I've got to hang on to, that will be awesome. But uh, very quickly, again, let's, let's remind folks. So Care for Kings uh, is an effort to raise some funds for the players and staff who were left high and dry when the Southern Kings were liquidated quite suddenly in September. And so you have another online auction this weekend, and uh, folks can get to it. What's the website again? Uh, www.care, num- the number four, kings.co.za. Oh, that's brilliant. Bram von Straten, thank you so much. Bye-bye, Donkey. It's a pleasure to have you back again. Love your infectious enthusiasm, and, and thank you for going the extra mile trying to get in touch with me right in the middle of the stream. You're like, uh, can I come on now? And I'm, I'm like, oh, come on, man. It's Oak wants to come on now. I mean, I'm right in the middle of the stream. <laughs> I'm sorry, Chris. Yeah, I, I, I'm, uh, hopefully we, some of the people listening have enjoyed it. But let's make sure we, we talk again in, in, in next week. And, uh, and thanks for the opportunity. You, you're such a wonderful guy. It's so easy to talk to you. Um, I, can, I can feel the warmth of your heart uh, and, and what you stand for. Um, so thank you so much. It, it, it's been in, incredible. So thank you. Thank you that you actually uh, I was uh, waiting in the meeting room. I didn't know if, you, if, I, if I'm going to be accepted. But, uh, <laughs> thanks for that. I really do appreciate it. Well, thanks a lot, Brom. And, and that, uh, that uh, Springbok Blazer, um, since it hasn't gone yet, I might have to register at that website. Now, what I will say is this. If, if I wind up being a top bidder on it, then I'm going to have to ask you to hold on to it till I see you in South Africa. <laughs> Thank you so much. I really do appreciate it, uh, Chris. And look after yourself and God bless my man. All right. Thanks a lot. Ladies and gentlemen, that's Bram von Straten, uh, former Springbok and uh, love late with the Southern Kings. And uh, he's going to hang up there. Okay. Okay. Um, Bram, I'm going to hang up there. Okay. All right. Cool beans. Well, folks, uh, thanks for tuning in. Uh, my apologies for the odd situation here. I hope that you enjoyed it. Uh, what do we got? Any chat going on here at all? I haven't seen. Okay. People have been chatting. So, oh, thank you for putting that in, Erica. That's correct. care for kingsco Anyway, folks, um, yeah, so um, now I can see the screen. I can see the chat. Can I get some feedback real quick? Was that weird or what? <laughs> Was that weird or what, folks? Um, did you guys enjoy that? Um, yeah, Hendo says get his telephone number. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, we're not going to do that there. So I haven't been able to find any 10s matches being broadcast live. They were, they were only available on ESPN. Bosch. A few other places carry them around the world, but I don't know who all it was. Look at this. We're getting some nice. So we got more uh, likes than we've got viewers right now. We got 94 likes. Push it up to 100, folks, please. Uh, I'd really appreciate that. Cool beans. All right. So you guys, uh, do, you were able to listen to it. Interesting ride. Yeah. All right, Erica. Yeah. No. It's uh, we made it happen. It wasn't the easiest, but in the meantime, I've got to sort out what's going on with my um, with my um, ugh, excuse me with my with my laptop and figure out why it didn't take the sound. So uh, Tony says that was ingenious, smart, and very ingenious. <laughs> Uh, and Marie wants the email for the lady viewers. <laughs> no, I don't think so. Yeah, no, it's, uh, 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 anyway, thank you so much, Bram von Schlatten. That was, uh, fantastic. I mean, it was kind of weird, but really good. Um, that puts me in a really great mood now. I'm going to head over and, um, see my sister and then go to the hospital and check on my mother and, uh, I'll do an update, let you guys know what's going on. Um, Lynn says this was refreshing. Yeah, it was a bit different. Is Ronaldo here or did Ronaldo take off? Because Ronaldo, uh, Ronaldo was trying to claim the reason it was working is because he was using a Mac and he was on the stream. <laughs> well, Andre Jakob says, in Boa Mac and Plan. Well, a soldier makes a plan too, my friend. Always have a plan. Always have a plan. So that was pretty cool, folks. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'm not leaving until I get 100 likes. You got 99 right now. So come on, push it up there. Push it up there. And somebody super chatted early in the stream. Thank you for this. Oh, it was uh, Flying Boar. Thank you, Flying Boar, for the super chat. Appreciate that super chat. There we go. We got 100 on the stream. Anyway, folks, um, pretty awesome. Um, I hope that, um, Chris, it's a motivational pick for Christmas. Uh, Anne-Marie, I didn't see it. I have to check and see if you sent it to a different account. Uh, but I, I will check for your message, Anne-Marie. Thank you so much for that. I appreciate it. But, uh, yeah, um, you know, here's the thing. You know, it's, uh, so we were talking about guests and people not showing up for the channel. A lot of times it's, it's not because not people are blowing up the channel. It's, uh, it's just because something happens or they are uncomfortable or they're just super busy. Uh, as I said, we had um, Steve Hofmeyer on the channel, and when I first contacted him <clears throat> in less than 24 hours after his agent contacted him, he's like, yeah, 
absolutely. Happy to go on. No restrictions whatsoever. We can talk about anything. It was awesome. Um, and Dr. Corne Mulder, when I got in touch with him, he's like, yeah, let's go on. So, you know, sometimes you just keep you on. But then, like right now, people are asking me to get Steve Hofmeyer back on the channel. Steve is busy. So I'll take him at his word. He's busy. So we haven't got him back on. But um, let's see. There's, um, you know, some of the other folks, um, there's other reasons why people don't come on. Not just my channel, other channels. So sometimes you have to coax them on. But again, folks, the thing that gets people to come on the channel is interest, the channel being interesting, but also that the way they're interviewed, the way they're treated by the host. Oops, my battery's down to 15%, so I won't be streaming much longer no matter what I do because I'm about to lose my battery. But uh, anyway, so the other thing that gets people to come onto the stream is the more subscribers you have. And that's why I try to tell people, particularly if you want big names. By the way, Lauren Southern, uh, who people asked me to get on the stream, I'm still waiting to hear back from her team. Uh, when last I left them on yesterday, uh, they had gotten my request and they were looking at it, so we're trying to set that up for her to come on. For tonight's stream, but the ladies, what's this? For tonight's stream, but it's for the lady viewers. Ah, you want to stream just for the ladies. <laughs> okay, uh, maybe I'm not understanding that properly, but anyway. Yeah, folks, um, anyway, so uh, here I am in central Ohio, broadcasting live from central Ohio, not from central Pennsylvania, which is a little bit of a difference. Uh, Ohio is safely in the, in the bag for Donald Trump. Uh, there's no way he'll lose Ohio, uh, even with re vote recounts, which aren't going to happen here in Ohio. Ohio came through for him. Pennsylvania did not come through because of the fraud that the Attorney General and the state of Pennsylvania perpetrated on us as voters in Pennsylvania. Hey, Stefan Snell, howdy to you. I hope you got to watch um, Bram von Schrotten. Uh, drop a like. It's Nancy Pelosi's driveway. <laughs> Ladies night, says Tony. Anyway, folks, yeah, so I'm going to call it here uh, before my phone dies completely. Um, uh, Erica says, Emery wants to corrupt me. <laughs> hey, Peaky, how are you? Um, and uh, yeah, a lot of ladies in there. The ladies like to chat in the chat, and that's awesome. Um, unfortunately, the stats don't back up. You'd think they're like half of the crowd was, was female, but if you look at the, um, the actual layout for, if I look at my stats, it's only about 25% of my viewers are female, unless people are lying on their accounts, so who knows. Um, do you have a contact detail we can get in touch? Are you talking for me? Uh, Dirk, if you want to get in touch with me, Hendo, if you're here, um, can you throw that, because I know you keep it handy, throw in the link, the URL to the about, you know, about Super Chats, memberships, contacting Chris, all that stuff. I made a video on that. Uh, a couple months ago, Hendo will we'll throw that link up there for you, and then you can reach out to me. I'll tell you how to get my email. Alternatively, I can tell you right now, unless you're on a mobile, it can be challenging, but if you're on a PC, then what you can do is you can go to um, the About tab on my channel and tap, click on that tab. you got videos, and, and uh, you know, go over here to the right. It's got About. Scroll down, and you'll see the a video, an introductory video, then the text about what the channel's, <clears throat> what the channel's all about. And just below that, you'll see, for business purposes, email. And you have to click on it, and it'll give you a little box. There it is. That's the video, so it'll tell you how to do all this stuff. Thank you, Hendo. I appreciate it. Bye-bye, Donkey. And then you, um, you'll, you'll click on it. It'll give a little box to prove that you're not, you know, you know, you're not a robot or a bot. You click on that, and it will reveal my email. Just copy and paste it into an email and send me an email. I'll do my best to get to it, but I get a lot of emails. And right now, um, with my mother here, i um, kind of busy, but I will try to get to it. Piki says, one never knows who is male or female these days. That's true, and some people feel there's something else, so that makes it even more complicated. Anyway, folks, did Trump win or lose? Trump, neither. Uh, no state has certified its results of the election yet. Pennsylvania's in question, lots of lawsuits, lots of claims of fraud. Um, I claim fraud, claimed it before the election even took place because they're violating election law. And, um, yeah, so there's a lot of claims out there, a lot of things going on, folks. So, anyway, uh, oh, you got it, Derek. Awesome. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. You got it quicker than most people get it. I think most people try to find it. They're actually on a mobile. And uh, a lot of things you cannot do on a mobile. It's very frustrating. Anyway, thank you, everyone, for the likes. Thank you for watching. Thank you for your patience. My thanks to my guest who wasn't able to arrive on time because he was delayed, but then went the extra mile to come on to the program and for a great conversation talking about uh, the Bermuda Tens. An interesting uh, new version of the game, folks. I hope you enjoy it. Um, yeah, uh, Peaky says, thank you for still doing the live stream. Now, Peaky, if I schedule something, unless I can't get a network, I'll, I'll do it. I always have my mobile. It's not ideal, but it does the trick. So anyway, uh, and I'm doing it, uh, you know, this way, um, landscape, because I know that, you know, the, the portrait is not very good. So anyway, uh, there you go, folks. Uh, thanks for your thoughts on my mother. Uh, I'll give her your prayers and your wishes, and um, I'll be, I'll, I'll stream a little bit later on, just to let you know what's going on and give you a heads up. But um uh, if I can stream the, uh, the thing tonight with the, um, with the uh, space launch, then I'll do it. But I've got to sort out my, um, my um, audio on this laptop. I don't know why it's not working. Um, it's interesting. But obviously, it, it, must, it must work. 
it must work over the laptop because uh, he heard me, but it didn't come through the Streamlabs. Anyway, okay. All right, folks, that's it. Uh, NASA, oh, they postponed. Okay, well, thank you very much, Boss Zebra. Then I won't worry about that tonight. It's been postponed. Okay, good to know. I won't worry about tonight. I'll worry about tomorrow. Cool. All right, thank you so much for that, guys. Uh, I'm going to drop off here, and I want to thank everybody for tuning in. Um, my special thanks to Ronaldo Jose for using his Macintosh so that we could make this all happen. Not! <laughs> Renato, just being cheeky there. Anyway, but thanks, folks. Appreciate it. Trump winning. What did I miss? Sudden change. Uh, Trump was never losing, Shack Dweller. It's not resolved. Um, uh, Biden may still win this thing, but we don't know. You have to show, first show the pick. Okay, uh, what are you talking about, show the pick? I, I can't um, because I'm on my mobile and the entire stream is on the mobile. If I reduce it, then it freezes the stream and I have to get to my mail. So I can't show the pick. Um, I don't have the ability to do that. So I'll have to save it for another one, later one. So sorry about the Emery, um, but that's the problem with running off your mobile. You can, I can only see myself here. I can't do anything else. On my laptop, I can bounce around. Anyway, I'll work on fixing that, and uh, I'll try to show that in the next stream. Anyway, folks, thank you so much. I appreciate it. God bless. Uh, have a good day, good evening, wherever you find yourself. And um, media censoring saying Biden won. Dad says I'm conspiracy. You're not a, cons you're not a conspiracy theorist, Jack Dwyer. All you have to tell your father is the following. No states have certified the election results. None of them certify the election results until December 8th. That's, I mean, so they can turn in early, but that's the date they have to turn in. So um, until states certify the election results, you can't claim anyone's won anything. And once they're certified, that doesn't mean it's over because people can still contest. They can file lawsuits to complain about uh, fraud or uh, about a vote count or things like that. Plus, Georgia is doing an automatic recount. Uh, Arizona ought to be doing a recount because they're in such a low percentage difference between the two of them. Nevada, the same thing. But I don't know if they're going to do it. There are lawsuits there, though. Uh, Malcolm Stark says, I'm invisible. Uh, no, I can see Malcolm. I can see Malcolm on there. And Jean-Pierre Leroux says Trump's number one. Rick Hearn, good to see you there, Rick. Malcolm Stark is there. And Morton Christie, we're still not seeing. Uh, nor are we seeing the right Reverend Rawhide. Missing him. Missing those guys a lot. Anyway, Tony, uh, thank you guys all so much. God bless. And we'll catch you a little bit later here. Trump second term. Eat your heart out. Who knows Biden? <laughs> all right, folks, that's it. Uh, I'll, I'll redo the, um, the, the cover for this so that you see the proper stream on it. And uh, anyway, thanks for tuning in. I'll try to get back and edit this and make the interview just uh, a separate portion, and, and but I don't know if I have the software to do that. I might have to wait till I get home. Anyway, folks, thanks for tuning in. Enjoy your Saturday. God bless. That's it. I'm going to close out here. How do I get out of this thing? Okay, there we go. All right. God bless, and have a good day. As Big Daddy Liberty says, never trust a commie. And as Chris Wyatt says, never trust a cadre. They're going to take everything you have. God bless.